Hello YouTubers, this is Bill McFadden from Tone Pure Music and this will be a tutorial on how to use the Bezier curve function in Cubase. Now if we go to project and then we go down to automation panel, then you'll see this pop up. And these are the kinds of things you can automate. You can automate your volume pan, EQ, dynamics, sends, and inserts, as well as mute. And this is a, a simple track with, we just have two tracks. We're going to automate the volume, and then we're going to create a VCA, and we're going to show the effect of automating the VCA along with the existing automation on these two existing tracks. Now we're going to primarily work with volume. So if I go to this track and then let's writing, I'm right clicking, show automation and the volume shows up. And I'll do the same for the Keyscape track. Right click and then show automation, or you could use a shortcut key, Shift A. Now, this track is the Berlin, the Orchestral Berlin Celli, an ensemble patch. And right here we have the Keyscape piano by Spectrosonics. And I've loaded in the my favorite patch basically for piano, the, the LA Custom C7 Cinematic. And then that's my favorite piano patch in the Spectrosonics library. Now, let's go ahead and just shortly or play the A measure Q to see what it sounds like without any volume automation. As you see, the volume is at zero in both cases. Let's go ahead and automate the volume. First thing we'll do is draw a line from measure zero to two, do them in two measure increments. Hit the object selection tool, move that over to zero. Go ahead and set our quantize to about an eighth or so. And as you notice, as I did that, there is a little dot that appears in between those two points and we can move our curve. There's your Bezier curve as you move your cursor around. And then we could go ahead and select those two points, copy, and then click on the beginning of measure two and paste, and measure four and paste, and measure six and paste. And we can even do the same thing in the volume curve for the keyscape. So starting at measure zero, we'll go ahead and paste, measure two, measure four, and six, or we could have just selected all of that and pasted it in. Now, now that we have our curve in here, it's the volume is going, as you can see, it's from about 3.77 and it'll go up to there. Let's just listen to it and watch the volume as it, as it goes up.
Now on the string, just to make it a little smoother, what we could do is move this point up here and then move this point down here and have it fade between those points instead of jumping from one volume level to the other. That'll give us a smoother transition. So let's listen to that. And to have the volume of the piano follow the volume of the strings, we can go ahead and delete these, this curve here, and then match them up by selecting and copying con Command C, and then going to measure zero in the volume curve on the piano and pasting. So now we have it more symmetrical, so the piano is gradually getting louder as the strings are and so on. So now if we click on the, the region selection tool or the range selection tool, then notice that we have these little boxes that are little squares that show up. Now the top square let you scale up vertically. So if you want more volume, just scale it up vertically. And notice everything is going symmetrically. And then over here we have a move vertically. And also when the icon changes to that sort of V, it's a left tilt or tilt left. So the left portion of the region is going up gradually. And then also if you select option or press down option as you're holding down, as you're moving this V key, V icon, then it compresses the data. Whoops. So we lost our selection. Okay. So I'm pressing down on option. So that's compressing the data instead. So you can visually see what's going on. And then we have this little box over here, as we saw, scale vertically. Then there's a little box over here, tilt right. And then the option compresses. So if I move that box. And then down here, if I click on that, we can scale around the absolute center. So as you see, the center is sort of staying the same and everything else around it is going up and down. And then if you uh, press option and move this icon up and down, then you get a different behavior. It's relative. Now, now that we have our two volume curves, let's see the effect of adding a a VCA. So what we're going to do is go to the mixer menu, F3, or we can just go up to Studio and select the console. And so this is what we have. If I select the Celli and then Shift and the Keyscape, and then I go over to the link command here. Then I can link using a VCA fader. Select OK. And so now we have this VCA fader link that will automatically increase and decrease the volume relatively relative to the two instruments. So I'll close this window. There's our VCA link. 
And if we right click and show automation, and then I'll go ahead and move these up a little bit. Notice we have a volume automation curve here. Now, suppose I take the line tool and just have a sloping volume going from measure zero to eight. Okay, notice, and then I'll go back to object selection over here. Notice there's your little circle in between and notice that as I move this, it's moving the curve for the, uh, the Berlin Chili and the Keyscape because they're linked together. So it's actually adjusting both of those using a Bezier curve. So let's go ahead and listen to the cue now. It's going to start out really quietly because the VCA is quite low. So that's, that'll wrap it up for this tutorial on using the Bezier curves in various aspects of automation. And again, if you go to the project menu and then you select on automation panel or use the F6 shortcut, you see, whoops, that's the wrong window, sorry about that. So F6, you see the different things that we can automate well, where we will actually have the Bezier curve. So volume pan EQ dynamics sends inserts, mute and others. And if you're not sure if something's gonna automate, just go ahead and give it a shot and see if you get um, an automation curve after you do the automation. But uh, some sample libraries actually, as you move the dials in their menu, that will actually become an automation um, lane. And then you can adjust the Bezier curves in that. And all the libraries are very different. There are a lot of differences, let's put it that way, between the different libraries and the way they implement their controls on the GUIs. So, You'll be surprised if you experiment around with some of the panels and the GUIs on your VST instruments and then select your, um, your read-write on it, like so. And then <clears throat> move the uh, dials on your GUI and some of them will actually open up an automation or create an automation lane with Bezier curves in it. So that's the end of this tutorial. This is Bill McFadden with Tone Pure Music. If you found this video informative or interesting, please like. And if you want to be notified when upcoming videos are posted, then please subscribe. So this is Bill McFadden signing off from Tone Pure Music. Bye.